Hi, welcome to the Game Splainer. I'm Jeff the Game Splainer, and today I'm Game Splaining July. So, this is my top 10 list for July. I'm back on track. I've managed to knock over around about 20 ish games, plus minus, I don't know the exact numbers, but I did have to do a little bit of delving to work out what my top 10 was, which is a really nice place to be at the moment. So, without further ado, let me get straight into it. My number 10 game for July is The Tales of Tuscany. So the game's plan for this went up last week. I hope that it makes sense. I was desperately trying to get that to back up with the Castles of Burgundy, uh, but I just haven't been able to get my hands on it. The uh, Castles of Burgundy has a new, well, new-ish, it came out last year actually, uh, big box version which has all of the stuff in it. I don't actually own Castles of Burgundy, but Castles of Tuscany is the new version. And it used a diff couple of different manipulations for the board. And the reality is, I actually prefer Castle of Tuscany over Burgundy anyway. So I'm actually not too dismayed that I don't have a copy of Burgundy. However, I would like to get that and get that game explained. So that may come up in the next few months or years, depending on how long it takes to get a copy of it. I just don't know with the state of the market as it is at the moment. But let's keep moving forward. My number nine game for July is Underwater Cities. I really like this game. I've found that it doesn't get back to the table anywhere near as much as it probably should uh, compared to where it actually lands in my list. And you'll find that this month I've played an awful lot of games that are really high on my list. So this top 10 was actually quite difficult to kind of pull out which ones I'm going to go for because a lot of them are on my list. But this one, um, Underwater Cities, it's plays really nicely if you can get a pattern on what you're doing. If you're not quite 100% on top of all of the stuff that's going on, it can be very, um, very hard to get anywhere within the game and to push yourself forward. But if you are remembering all the rules, then I, if I do this and this and this, that will push you forward and remember what gives you the points. And the reality is, if you can do stuff that will give you a lot of points or at least give you a couple of points, early in the game, you're going to get those points every time a scoring comes up, which is like three times. So any points you're able to get in the first portion of the game, you're actually getting those points three times throughout the game. Uh, so it's worthwhile just kind of tracking that and just pushing really hard at the beginning of the game to get a few points to then enable yourself to just keep running that amount of points for my number eight game for july is crusaders they will be done now i really like this game i think that the uh essence of the game it feels like it could be something different than what it is so there's always the potential when you've got new players of them coming at this game as if it's a, a war game only but it's not it's a uh area majority type game you're trying to build up those areas and then put buildings into the areas that you hold in order for you to then get another benefit. And so the earlier those benefits you can get or the right path through those benefits you can get, the better off you are. I found every time I've played this, I've played almost the same way. And I, I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. I really like the, the game, but I'm finding I'm playing the same way each time I do play it to push me through get this and then get this and then get this because the majority of points are in that attacking and overcoming the enemy kind of thing but you've got to have enough attack power to do that um and it's just something that i've noticed that i tend to go over after that to be able to do the attacking to get the spaces to then build rather than worrying about all the open spaces that could be built on without really having any attacking going on because every element gives you points but i feel that the attacking points come really well and kind of they build up really nicely so look I've, i find it's a really good game have a look into it and see what you think of it if you haven't come across it my number seven game for july is ride the rails ride the rails is an interesting game it's it's built on this idea of building up companies or getting shares in companies and everyone can get shares in the same companies and then building as much benefit or as much profit out of those companies as you possibly can. I did do a game plan of this one last month, uh, or during July, should I say, and I did ask the question, are these actually similar to 18XS games? They are kind of similar, but not at the same 
breadth. There's a whole bunch extra in the 18xx that uh, is something I haven't come across and haven't thought about. So uh, if if you've watched my videos and I've said something about it being the same as an 18xx, I don't know what I'm talking about. I've said that before. I actually state very publicly that I haven't played any 18xx games, but there is extra element within those games. This game, however, is about purchasing portions of companies and then getting that company to give you the best benefit while keeping an eye on what everyone else is doing so you can kind of give yourself benefit without necessarily giving other people the benefit. And there's a lot of to and throw and a lot of thinking. I much prefer this version to the Irish Gage, which is the first version of the of, of this kind of team of games. I think it's called the Iron Rail series. Uh, I will get onto the third game and get that up at some point, but I prefer this one over the other one because there's always an ability to get a company. In fact, part of the gameplay is get a company at the beginning of each round and you can get more of the same company that you've already got or a new company. It's entirely up to you. Whereas with Irish Gage, you're kind of if you have the money, you can say, okay, we're putting that up to bid and whoever has the most money can get that and they're going to get a whole bunch more benefits. So what I found is that whoever gets the most rail tokens, rail shares, shall, shall we say, uh, over the early game is very likely to do very well out of it. My number six game for July is Ecos, First Continent. Okay, Ecos is a interesting game because you start with the deck and you put some cards on the table and you're drawing cheats or pieces out of a bag and when those pieces come out you get to add markers onto any of your cards that have those mark those little markings on them. When a card is full you can then do what is on that card. You need to balance when you're filling a card up to get the best benefit out of it because you're going to be able to potentially get four times of the thing out of it because of the number of times that it happens. Sometimes you'll have a card that will only happen once, other times two or three or four times. And so knowing that and knowing what the state of the board that everyone's using needs to look like in order to get the best benefit out of this one card is really important. Uh, so you work to get the benefit stuff up so this card over here can do really well when it actually turns over. And I think that's the key to the game. If I've played this a few times and I've found that the uh, if there's people in the opposition who haven't quite grasped that, until partway through the game, because you always kind of realise at some point. But if they haven't quite grasped that until partway through the game, they're so far behind that it's next to impossible for them to catch up. And so they're kind of like, oh, why am I bothering? Um, so it's it's really one of those games where you almost need to play a few rounds to go, okay, does everyone understand what they're doing? Let's take it back and start again, just so we can kind of get a feel for everything that's going on. My number five game for July is Alibari. A nice cup of tea. Alibari is the newer version of Snowdonia. Uh, that it, it's it, it, it's really really similar. In fact, playing playing Alibari with a player who had played Snowdonia, you can feel the similarity between them. In fact, having not played Snowdonia for a while, I'm finding that when I play it, I'm like, yeah, that's just Snowdonia. It, it it feels like the same game. It's not. Don't misunderstand me. It's not, it has its own intricacies, but the rule set feels vastly similar to that of Snowdonia. And what you're doing is you're just clearing area of rail to kind of push forward and you're putting markers into spots to get the points at the end of the game or to get benefits out of that, or you're building T fields to, um, or clearing out the dirt from T fields and when a whole area is cleared out, you're then getting that tea field and getting the benefit from that every now and then. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on with this that just kind of meshes and molds together. But the game itself plays to stop people from being able to just kind of sit back and keep doing something without actually working towards the end game. And so the game pushes itself forward. And I really appreciate that in the game. There's this or a constant feeling of movement. And because the game is doing stuff by itself, and you're never sure exactly when it's gonna happen because it basically happens whenever a white cube comes out of the bag, you have to kind of keep that in mind. Uh, oh, I'm working towards getting that field, but 
it's probably pretty likely that the game's going to take out that field before I get there. So, or give benefit from fields. So I better get fields in really quickly. Uh, little stuff like that and the weather changes and that gives it different benefits or takes away ability to get stuff uh, throughout the game. I, I just find that really, really worthwhile and there's a nice way of playing on this game that I don't find with any of the other games. My number four game for July is Tekkenu. Now, I played two of the um, this kind of set of games back to back. I played this and Twantan Suyu back to back and I vastly prefer Tekkenu. Vastly prefer it. Uh, Twantan Suyu didn't even make my top 10 list. That's how far apart they are. I I still, still think that Twan Suyu is a good game, and that's the game that got games played last month. But Tekkenu, I think, is a better game. There's a lot of thinking and crunching going on with it. Now, what I noticed is when I originally played these to learn them and get them up, my wife was not a real fan of getting into it. But this time, she played really well, and I think she, I feel like she won both of the games back to back, and that kind of gave her a bit, a bit of a better feeling over, oh, I can do this, and so suddenly this is actually not a bad game. I really like it. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Don't misunderstand me. There's a heck of a lot of stuff going on, but it's dependent on which section of the board we're taking stuff from, and there's so many different sections of the board. There's it's just a lot of explanation. And I think that's the case with both, with all of these games. In fact, there's a lot of explanation for this is how things work. If you can get through that, um, it's a really good game on the table. But getting through that is the hard part. Uh, and I would even suggest that if you're getting together with people to tell them, we are going to play Tekkenu. Please watch the gameplay of Tekkenu or the gameplay of... <clears throat> or the game's blame of tech and you so you understand what you're doing before we get together. Because sitting down and then having to explain every portion of the board is really long and really just dries everyone out. So it's a worthwhile thing to kind of think ahead with this one. My number three game for July is Viticulture. That's a really familiar game. It comes up very often. In fact, I would suggest that my last three games come up every single time they get played. They get onto these top 10 lists. Uh, so Viticulture, if you haven't come across it, I always play with the Tuscany expansion. I think that's a really worthwhile expansion because it suddenly turns it into four different seasons rather than two seasons. Uh, there's a whole bunch of differences, but I'm actually at the point now, because I played with Tuscany so often, I've forgotten how the original base game runs. Have the expansions in there. If you're able to get your hands on them, get those expansions, put them in. They are good games. And I stand by every Stonemaier game that I have. You'll see that I've got Castles of Mac and Ludwig over my shoulder. That's another Stonemaier game. Oh, there's another one, Tapestry. It's above my head. And right next to it, Pendulum. The Stonemaier games, I think, are really wonderful, wonderful games and worth your while to have a look into. Uh, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you will notice whenever I talk about a Stonemaier game, I really, really like them. Uh, so I would back a Stonemaier. I'd definitely back Viticulture. I think it's such a good game, such a really well thought out game. With all the expansion stuff, it's such a well thought out game. Without the expansion stuff, when I originally played it, it felt like a really well thought out game, which is why I got the extra expansion stuff. And now I can't play without it. So... It, yeah, it's a really, really fine game and there's so much going on that you can think about different avenues for how to get there. My number two game is The Gallerist. That's right, The Gallerist is once again up at my top levels. Uh, it's another Vita Lasada and I, I shouldn't have to continually say about this game, but every time I play it, it just gets right at the top of these lists because it is such a wonderful game. It's probably my favorite of the Vita Lasadas. He's got quite a few out now, but this one's probably my favorite of them all. Potentially Lisboa may be doing that. I'm not sure, depending on the day, really. But The Gallerist, I think, is just such a wonderful game. The essence of this game, and I think this is the reason I like it so much, is you only have four choices over what you can do. Once you choose one of those choices, you're then having two choices within what you can do. And then you do all that stuff with that that comes along with that choice. But where you're saying you can't do that again, so it actually reduces you to only having three choices. And having that small amount of choice is actually really, really good because it, it focuses you on what you're doing. You have to think ahead to see what's coming up. And it doesn't have this vast just blur of rules. Oh, there's 20 things you can do, do these all. You just have three things that you could do. And But the depth of this game is so 
much greater than a lot of the other games I've got. Uh, and I think that's the thing that makes this game work so well, is the limited choice, but the lot of depth within that choice. My number one game for July is Brass Birmingham. Yes, that's right. Brass has made it to the top of my list again. Uh, I really like these games. Brass sits as my number two all-time game. I have a feeling that the Galera sits within the top five as well, I can't remember exactly where where that is, but I know that Brass Birmingham, Birmingham, sorry, Jules, uh, that's my wife for everyone who's wondering, uh, and she's English and she always hasn't got my pronunciation, so please forgive. Um, but Brass Birmingham is just such a wonderful, really heavy thinky game where you want to do something, but you must have the resource of coal to be able to do it. If you need a resource of ore, you can just do it, but you've got to have the ability to get to the resource of coal in order to be able to do stuff. And so there's this push and pull of, oh, I want to do this, but I can't do this yet. I've got to do this, 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 to get this stuff all joined together to be able to do the thing I want to do. Uh, the game I had the other night, my wife was working towards putting a really high point valued tile down there's only a few of them and there's very limited spaces for those tiles to go. She had already got one down. I hadn't got any of them down. So we're both going after that same spot and I just happened to get it like a turn before she was able to get there. And she was like, oh, I've been working towards that. And she was really grumpy at me for taking it, even though that would have done her extraordinarily well to have that down where I when I didn't have any of them. And we've given her like an extra 40 points or something um, on top of what her actual what my mark, markings were, and I would have dropped back 20. It's the, uh, the, that, that pottery thing, it's, it's, it's tough. You can play without it, you can win without it, but there's so many points on there that it's worthwhile going after to get uh, potentially two if you're able to. But pushing forward into those spots is so important. Um, and I've, I just, there's a, there's a crunch on this game that doesn't really feel like it exists so much with other games. So look, I'm going to leave it there. I think that I've done game splains for all of my games. In fact, I'm positive that I've done game splains for all of the games that are in the top 10 this month. So please, if you haven't come across those games, have a watch my game splain and game splay to get a feel for the games and what they actually are. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be game splained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm game explaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.